The first time I ever ran was at 14 years old. It was the first time that I didn't feel limited in my life and that I felt free. Hi, I'm Scout Bassett, sprinter and long jumper, and here's everything that I do in a day in preparation for the Paralympics. Good morning, self. It's 6.30 a.m. and we're ready to start the day. I wake up and I remove the charger off of my knee to begin putting on my prosthetic. First thing that I do is make myself a cup of coffee. And then after that, I usually make myself a little light breakfast, maybe apples with peanut butter or banana. After breakfast, I like to get some work done, so that might be answering some emails or catching up on some projects or things that I'm working on. On race days, I always make sure I have my competition leg and I have my race kit already packed. I also like to include water and make sure that we always have snacks. After doing some work, I look forward to getting to the track and starting my real job, so to speak. Actually, in my mid-20s is when I received my very first microprocessor knee. I could do things that I wasn't able to do in terms of the lifting and the squatting, going up and down stairs and steep hills and it's completely waterproof. It was the first time I ever walked in the ocean or any body of water with two legs. The knee has computers in it, it has gyroscopes, it has a loading sensor, and it's gonna pick up your every movement, what kind of incline surface you're on. And of course, there's a battery in the knee, so it's heavier. And if you want to see if the knee is fully charged, there's bars, just like on your phone. The app, it tells you how many steps you've taken on the knee. I've only had the knee, I think about two years, and I've taken over 12 million steps already. And so, it's pretty amazing. When I arrive at the training center, I usually start with a warm-up. The warm-up can be 30 to 40 minutes, and it involves usually a couple of warm-up laps, jogs, slow jogs, and then we move into what we call a dynamic warm-up, which can be high knees, A, B, C skips, lunges, it could be accelerations, build-ups, strides, all active warm-ups where you're working and, and warming up all the muscles needed. We don't normally stretch until after we've done the dynamic warm-up. And then we move into the start of the actual workout. An example of a workout that we did this week, two 300s, three 200s, three 100s, and all of the rest in between each of those intervals is just a walk-back recovery. Sprint a 300, then you walk 300. So whatever distance you run is what your walk back recovery is. So it's under an hour. For lunch, I gravitate more towards plant-based foods and meals just because there's not a lot of breaks in between workouts. So it's hard to eat things that take a long time to digest. So usually I bring um, nuts to the track. I like seaweed chips even, like things that are a little bit saltier just because you tend to sweat out a lot of the sodium. And then we move to typically the weight room. The first half of the strength workout is the power lifts, the Olympic lifts that you think of, bench press, deadlift, squats. And then the back half of the strength is core, plyos, isos, stability drills and work, maybe some arm drills, working on speed of pumping your arms. That's usually the end of the strength workout. I want parents that have children, when they see somebody with a disability, to not shush their child, not pull their child away, because that really indicates to the child that there's something to be afraid of. I think more times than not, the person is going to want to, to share, to have an educational moment because that really helps the child to realize like afterwards, oh, it wasn't so bad, they're just like me, you know, and it really helps to normalize it. Three o'clock is when I finish training and I start my cool down, which is a jog, a slow jog, very, very <laughs> slow jog. And when I had my first prosthetic here in the States, I was eight years old. I had just your basic mechanical, like I wanted it to be skin tone. 
so I would have this like cosmetic cover over it because I wanted to be able to go to school and look like I had two anatomical legs. I don't know who I thought I was fooling, but I think it was just something that made me feel like a little bit more secure and not wanting to stand out. And then around 14, actually when I started running, is when I realized I needed to get rid of that because a running prosthetic, there's nothing anatomical about it. That was a big moment for me in my life when I had to realize like I just wasn't gonna be able to hide it. I tried out for the 2012 Paralympic Games, went to those trials and came in last place. Of course, I thought about quitting, but then I just worked my butt off that following year and came to the 2013 US National Championships and beat all the girls that previously the year before had beaten me at the trials. So often we think of successes coming overnight. And for me, it wasn't until 2016, so six years from when I started doing track till I made my first Paralympic team. Typically from three to four, I go and see the physio or the athletic trainer for treatment. So that can be anything from getting ACU or manual treatment such as cupping or laser therapy, an ice or hot bath, a combination of the two. After physio, I come home and make a smoothie or a shake. I love using sliced bananas, just a dollop of peanut butter, a plant-based protein powder, and water or a little bit of almond milk. That's really my go-to. And then I usually do stretching or yoga, usually around five o'clock. Then after stretching, I start to make dinner and have dinner usually by six o'clock. I love making sauteed spinach. So just using a little avocado oil, some garlic and a little salt and pepper and sauteing that. But usually uh, some sort of sauteed or steamed veggies, a grain of some sort, and then some sort of protein that's plant-based or a fish and, and maybe once a week like a chicken. 6, 6.30, I'm usually winding down and watching sports, oftentimes eating dinner as I watch sports in the background. Baseball or an NBA game or football. Then after I watch a little bit of TV, I start preparing for the next day, setting my clothes aside, packing my snacks and fuel for practice the next day. Before I get into bed, I clean my liner with water, alcohol, soap. I also will wash and clean my actual residual limb. And that's really important because it's easy, especially if you're an athlete and you're sweating, to get bacteria on the skin or in the liner. So it's really critical that you clean both of these every night. You never want to have to go in for a revision or to get a further amputation. So it's really critical that you take care of your residual limb. I might read for a little bit or start doing some meditation, about a half an hour typically, and then I'm usually asleep by 9.30. I like to get between nine to 10 hours of sleep is when I feel fully charged and then I wake up the next day and do it all over again. Okay, that's everything for today. It's 9.30 and I'm going to catch some sleep. Night! And that's it. That's everything that I do in a day in preparation for the Paralympics.